Sorry, we're closed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Episode 55 of Sorry We're Closed. And as I do on most Thursdays, we're going to combo some baseball and business today. And we will be speaking about none other than the New York Metropolitans. And they gave us a baseball business topic on a silver platter uh, this past week, as everyone has to know by now, unless you've been living under a rock. The Mets GM or former GM, Jared Porter, uh, sent 63 or something somewhere in the 60s um, text messages to a young lady who was a reporter at the time somewhere, I think, in in Chicago when he was with the Cubs, and as well as a dick pic uh, and all unsolicited. She was not interested. She did not um, come off interested. I don't there was nothing there. Uh, where this would have been warranted uh, to to do. Uh, not to mention uh, sending dick pics, even when asked, seems odd to me. But some people apparently send them even when not asked for them. So it's, it's a weird story. It's something that probably has been known about within people in the baseball community for quite some time, probably thrown under the rug. And now it has been brought to life now that he has been hired as the general manager of the New York Mets. And... Well, no longer as we as we've now seen this kind of ties into this hiring process and what's going on in baseball uh, and as far as the business end of these things is these types of positions are almost political positions in the sense that you are under so much scrutiny things are going if you've if you've messed up in the past things are going to come out about you People are going to come after you if you've done things that are screwy in the past and these people do, do know, maybe wanted to just kind of let it go and get on with their own lives are now thinking that you're not worthy of a position like this and don't want you in that position possibly in this type of case to harm other uh, female reporters or anything like that and are going to come after you and leak stories and get you into a position where you are rightfully belong, probably out of baseball. And now... Baseball executives, you know, owners in particular, Steve Cohen's of the world, have to vet these people tenfold to really have an idea of what is happening. Now, if I'm Steve Cohen, I'm, you know, you want connections over at ESPN, you want connections at these publications knowing, hey, listen, don't don't hire this guy. This is what's going on with this guy. The, the story is good regardless. Obviously, it adds a little bit more juice to this world, the fact that he was hired as a general manager recently, but and on a, also to a team that has been in the headlines almost feels like every day during the offseason. But by the same token, this story was already probably going to come out uh, and and probably published at some point. Now, you now you it's already a stain on Steve Cohen and his hiring process and who he's doing. However, the response to this is huge. And as we all know in the business world, whether it's in politics, whether it's in scandals with your own business, you know how many scandals does does Apple have or does Amazon have? I mean, Amazon seems to be have, have been in the in the headlines all pandemic about not paying their employees good or keeping the the environment, the work environment safe and, and all of these things and things go away. The way you respond to them is 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 quite is quite important to making these things disappear in a, in a timely manner for your business to operate well. Now, how they do it, I don't know. You know, sometimes it's paying the employees more. Sometimes it's making for Amazon, making the working conditions a little bit better uh, and keeping your employees happy. Um, sometimes it's other ways. I don't you know. I don't know. But Steve Cohen, on the other hand's response was was pristine, pristine, which you would expect from such a savvy business guy. He came out. I think he tweeted that night that he was going to uh, ask the or he's going to call Jared Porter at that moment. Uh, which I think was like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, probably get all the information he can, find out from his execs who he trusts, what's going on here, what's behind the scenes, who's got contacts, who you know, knows more and more about this story. And then it's, I think it was like 7 a.m. Steve had made the announcement that he had been fired and, and let go. Easy decision. Easy decision. The guy doesn't belong in baseball. Um, if you're sending 60, he probably needs help. He needs psychological help if he's doing that. Uh, and... 
it, it was an easy decision, not only from the from the fact that he did horrendous things to this lady, but the, on top of it, you the guy was a meaningless position. He's a general manager of a team that has a president of baseball ops, as I've talked about time and time again on baseball podcasts, on this podcast. When you have a director of baseball ops, the guy, the, the GM is, all right, whatever, yeah, okay, maybe you control the minor leagues a little better. Maybe maybe that's what, maybe the baseball ops guy only wants to deal with the major league baseball team. He doesn't want to deal with the minor leagues. Maybe that's maybe you have that role. But then your 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 job is is really meaningless in the grand scheme of things. So if I'm Steve Cohen, the it's an immediate firing. I want nothing to do with this guy in this story. I want the Mets to be out of this headline as quickly as possible, or at least in the headline now is is ex Mets GM. And then you're just coupled in with the Cubs and with any, any other teams that he worked with as, as teams that have hired this gentleman. But you have to you have to do the media firing. Steve Cohen and Steve Cohen did brilliantly. Went out, found some information, made a decision immediately. Impeccably done by Steve Cohen. And now the Mets are back to talking about with things that, that are meaningful and, and signing free agencies. They didn't get George Springer, you know, recently. I'm sure they're upset about that. But they're they're back to focusing on baseball, and I think that was handled so perfectly. And in the business world, you can't have these types of stains, and when you do, you have to handle them the, the appropriate way. That's why that's why all major corporations have PR you know, have PR firms that that work for them to let them know how to handle these situations and where to move. You know what to say, what move to make, how to handle anything that might come as a direct result from your own moves. You know, these are what these are the things that happen in this business world, and how you're able to handle them is a direct correlation to how successful your business will be. I mean, Nike, for example, when you talk about the 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 overseas factories in China and how they have you know, supposedly they had like nets, so people on the windows, so people couldn't commit suicide uh, or had bars and stuff like that, like some crazy, crazy working conditions, and they're blamed for it. For using them, I mean, obviously, it's not them. You know, China or you know, whoever, whatever country they may have been, are approving these types of working conditions. They're just hiring the factories. They're just doing work with the factories. It's not really Nike's fault, but most people view that like Nike, Apple, all these companies that do work in these these countries that have are allowing these types of work conditions are partly um, to blame for these types of work conditions. Because if you didn't do work there, they'd have to change them, right? But and then you you just dive into that rabbit hole of of well now the iPhone costs you know fourteen thousand uh, dollars because you're not able to do it as well or not as cheaply as you would be able to do and you know yeah a lot of people and this is you know a much larger conversation but we have a, you have a ton of people that now that will will you know talk on their high horse about China and how their work conditions are horrible and it's unbelievable that these companies use them and they're tweeting it from the iPhone that they use it, it's. It's pretty hypocritical. It's pretty ridiculous, but you know, it's business. It is what it is. Uh, at, at this point, you, you figure it out. You do the best you can. You make the best decisions you can for your own business, and move on. Steve Cohen made a great decision here, and and I think I don't know who their next GM is. Who they, if they have someone in mind, if they'll just hire internally and kind of promote someone and move on from this whole thing. But it's 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 not something that Steve Cohen or the Mets needed. They were having an impeccable offseason. Free agent signings, uh, a fun, loving, charismatic, you know, owner, on, Twitterly active. Like it was just such a, a well-run operation for the entire offseason. And now you get a little bit of a dose of reality with a bad hire. And uh, I wouldn't. They're not in the doldrums by any means, but a little, you know, they're on cloud nine. Maybe they're on cloud seven now. You know, they get brought back down to reality a little bit. The good news in all of this is we got this guy out of baseball. This guy obviously did not belong in baseball. Uh, I don't know why he, uh, why this took so long to come out. It, it seems as though I know Craig Carton and Jeff Passan went at it uh, a little bit on 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 the radio yesterday, talking about uh, apparently it happened in 2017. Craig Carton was was uh, was blaming uh, Jeff Passan, saying that why are you sitting this on sitting on this for for three years, four years. And now coming out on top of it, he was blaming, he was, he was accusing Jeff Passan of knowing about this, these types of allegations and this type of story being possibly leaked eventually, while also when the hiring process happened, saying that J- Jared Porter had, the great t- had a great temperament for, um, for the New York media and the New York market. It, it, who knows? We probably will never know if Jeff knew about these allegations prior to 
um, prior to the hire, but well, prior to the hire that rhymes. But I mean, it's it's it, this whole thing is kind of a mess. And again, it could have been a lot worse if Steve Cohen didn't handle it the way he did. And again, this this we talk about this with the players' association when they fight with 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 Major League Baseball and the owners, and they how they did not handle it well last year. This is a perfect example of something handling it perfectly and then and moving in the right direction getting this franchise you know hitting hitting the hitting the stain making you know making the adjustment and moving on um and now the Mets are positioned to once again start signing some good guys and and move into the spring training looking nice guys as always i appreciate you listening an easy one today just talking a little bit of pr a little bit of business along with some baseball and how the mets were able to do such a great job handling this and, and moving in the right direction I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And uh, listen, another episode drops Monday, 5 a.m. As always, uh, have a great weekend, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the Sorry We're Closed podcast. Go subscribe to our email chain over at thepatlight.com and follow us on all social media. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Sorry, we're closed.